Hello and good morning students. I welcome you all to my geography class. So in today's lesson we are going to learn about recording weather. So in our previous chapter we had learned about the different elements of weather like the humidity humidity air pressure cloud cover and what are the factors affecting those elements of weather also we learned about the difference between weather and climate so the topic of discussion in today's video will be recording weather various instrument that measures the elements of weather thirdly we'll be discussing about maps and weather forecast and also we'll be discussing about ice heads and isotherms so these are the topic that we are going to discuss in today's video so weather has many elements as i already told you that wind air pressure temperature etc these are the important elements of weather now to keep a record of these elements many instruments have been invented the meteorological department measures all the weather and uh, measure the weather through different instrument and make available in the form uh, available information to the people so let us discover the major weather measuring instrument and their uses so we have already studied that weather of a place depends on variables such as air pressure temperature precipitation in the form of rain snowfall and hail humidity and cloud cover as well as speed of the wind and direction so weather affected affects our day to day life in many ways we plan our holidays journey food habits clothes that whatever we wear that totally depends on the weather condition therefore it is very important to know our weather of a place right so an important part of weather study is weather forecasting now this is made possible only by collecting weather data from weather station like balloons weather ships and satellites and then putting them together with the help of computer collecting all those data from different source and they are compiled in a computer to forecast that weather now all these elements of weather can be measured with the help of different instruments they are found in weather station where data are collected continuously now various meteorological station in india as well as throughout the world they are engaged in collecting data on various elements that affect the weather daily weather and prepare the daily weather report now the meteorological department located in pune which is in maharashtra is the headquarter of all the meteorological station in india right so this is a basic introduction about this particular video now we'll be seeing what are the important weather recording instrument first of all we'll be talking about the air temperature and the instrument required to measure the air temperature right first of all we'll try to understand what is air temperature now the air temperature refers to degree of hotness or coolness of the air in fact the heat energy from the sun also known as insulation first heat up the earth surface and the heated surface then it then in turns heat backs or up air above it that means when it radiate back it heat the air thus the air is gradually warmed up layer by layer right now to measure this the temperature of the air right degree of hotness and coldness of the air we need some instrument the important one about uh, important one is maximum and minimum thermometer now the maximum and minimum thermometer are used to measure the highest temperature and the lowest temperature of the day very important to know maximum and minimum thermometer is used to record the highest and the lowest temperature of the day so let us study the study what are the element used in a uh, maximum and minimum thermometer the two types the two most commonly used scale for measuring the temperature are celsius scale and fahrenheit scale they are recorded in degree centigrade or degree celsius right so on the degree celsius 0 degree is taken as the freezing point and 100 degree celsius as the boiling point whereas 
in the Fahrenheit scale 32 degree Fahrenheit is considered the freezing point and 212 degree Fahrenheit is considered as the boiling point now beside using this two thermometer a single instrument can also be used that is also known as 6s maximum and minimum thermometer now what is it let us discuss in short now 6s maximum and minimum thermometer is a u-shaped glass tube with two glass bulb at the two end now alcohol and mercury are used as a liquid in the thermometer and the glass tube is graduated like it is graduated with different you know measuring uh, units as the temperature rises and falls the liquid expands and contracts so two metal indicators that is register the temperature recorded now temperature is also recorded in a shade like for this we use Stevenson screen it is a box to set the meteorological instrument like 6s maximum uh, thermometer 6s th thermometer weight and dry thermo uh, thermometer etc so against precipitation and direct heat heat radiated from the outside source while it's still allowing air to circulate freely around them a thermograph which can also record a continuous temperature record uh, a continuous temperature is also placed here so basically we can see that to record a free moving uh, temperature of free moving air we need we can use 6s maximum and minimum thermometer we can also use uh, ma uh, normal maximum and minimum thermometer we can use Stevenson screen if you want to measure temperature of in, in the shade we can also use thermograph these are some of the instrument that is used to measure the temperature of the air right okay so let us discuss about atmospheric pressure so it's also a very important element of the weather so we all know that air has weight and exerts some kind of pressure to the surface of the earth now this is collectively known as air pressure or atmospheric pressure now this atmospheric pressure over surface of the earth is not same it changes frequently over the period of time air exert an equal amount of force in all direction now you see to measure the atmospheric pressure right to measure the atmospheric pressure we need instrument called barometer now atmospheric pressure is measured by an instrument called barometer there are two types of barometer used popularly by the geographer that is the mercury barometer and the android barometer now the mercury barometer is not very it's not much portable we can, we can say that it's not uh, you cannot carry it around right so it is very heavy compared to the android barometer so it's very too big made of glass and contains liquid mercury so because of which we cannot it is not portable portable now the android barometer is very convenient to carry as it has no liquid in it it is a metal box with a partial vacuum within the box this box is made in such a manner that it is very sensitive it expands when the pressure is low and is compressed when the pressure is high so the pointer which is inside this box attached with the box indicates the atmospheric pressure however it is not very accurate if we compare with the mercury barometer right so apart from that a barograph is also used by meteorologist to record air pressure continuously now the instrument is like an android barometer but the pointer is placed by a pen the unit used in measuring pressure is millibar so normal atmospheric pressure at the sea level is 1013 millibar which is the standard air pressure at the sea level so hope you have understood the two important elements of weather and the instrument used in the uh, used to measure this two important elements now let us come to the next topic that is humidity now humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air as i already discussed as we have already discussed in the previous video now amount of water vapor that a air can hold varies from time to time due to the change in temperature therefore the warm air 
the warm the warmer the air the more water vapor it can hold when the warm moist air cools it sometimes reaches a point where it cannot no longer hold all its water vapor so the air becomes more becomes saturated now saturation can be defined as a condition where a mass of air can no longer hold the moisture at a given temperature so further addition of the moisture or water vapor condensation to form cloud mist or fog then the temperature at which saturation take place is called dew point so this is very important to note what is dew point dew point is the temperature at which saturation of the air take place right now there are two ways in which we can express humidity that is relative humidity and absolute humidity now what is relative humidity now the relative humidity is the ratio between the amount of water vapor present in a given volume of particular temperature to a maximum amount of vapor that the same volume of air can hold at that temperature which is which is also can be expressed in this way relative humidity is equivalent to actual amount of water vapor divided by total amount of water vapor needed to saturate the air multiplied by 100 so if you calculate in this way you'll be getting the amount of water vapor in percentage like so for example temperature of a particular area is so says at a given temperature a particular volume of air can hold 30 grams of water vapor but actually it has 15 gram of water vapor that is so relative humidity is equivalent to 30 15 into 100 divided by 30 then we'll be getting 50% that is the air has 50% of humidity so 50 50 chances of rainfall now the absolute humidity is the amount of water vapor in a unit of air so it is measured in gram per meter okay gram per cubic meter sorry when the percentage of water vapor in the air is high the weather is humid in such weather we sweat lot and feel uncomfortable now this is all about the uh, humidity very important to note humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air there are two ways for measuring humidities are uh, two uh, ways of expressing humidity that is relative humidity which is expressed in percentage and absolute humidity which is expressed in gram per cubic cent cubic meter right so the instrument used in measuring humidity is hygrometer or it is also known as wet and bulk wet and dry bulb thermometer which measures the relative humidity and has a conversion table which is used to calculate the value in percentage now dry bulb thermometer is a normal thermometer whereas wet bulb thermometer is dip in a mostly uh, dip in a muslin with a, a wet muslin wrapped in a, a wet bulb thermometer is wrapped in wet muslin so thereby it measures the dry bulb temperature dry temperature as well as the uh, you know wet temperature now it says that the greater the difference in two readings lower is the relative humidity and drier the atmosphere so if you find the difference like if the temperature at dry bulb dry bulb is say 20 degree celsius and wet bulb is 10 degree celsius the difference is 10 right so that means more difference that means relative humidity is lower and the atmosphere becomes drier the smaller the difference higher the humidity say for example 20 degrees dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature is 15 degree difference is 5 so the humidity will be higher right so if there is no difference then the relative humidity is 100% now if it is 10 10 both the side 10 Uh, 10 or uh, 20 degree in wet bulb thermometer and 20 degree in dry bulb thermometer so it is equal which means relative humidity is 100% then is it is then the air is fully saturated it will obviously rain right so this is how uh, the humidity relative humidity with the help of relative humidity calculate uh, uh, reading taking the reading from dry bulb thermometer and wet bulb thermometer we take the reading and study the amount of water vapor in the air 
so about cloud and other uh, cloud cover and the instrument used to measure cloud cover we'll be discussing in the next video for today we'll conclude up to this thank you for watching